want to shoot. question of the day. What can you do against a hulking mass of pure muscles and anger issues? Bullets and explosives do not deter this creature. Fire will merely slow this behemoth down. It will not stop once it has gone into a fit of rage. Here's his secret. He's always angry. Perpetually assaulting anything nearby like a passionate, unrestrained tank. Once the attack mode has started, their growls will grow in intensity and frequency as you begin to notice the ground is shaking due to their advancement towards you. The absolute antithesis to the crying girl, or the ones that cry, also known as Nick's girlfriends, well, with the exception of their mental instability, and both of them are arguably going to be the most unnerving creatures you come across, only second to Canadians. Nevertheless, its raw power outclasses the lethality of the witches. If a team doesn't get a situation under control quickly, it could easily spell doom for all in the area. This thing, this unearthly biological monstrosity, has many names. Super ass zombie, big freaking zombie, big ass zombie, the big mother, <laughs> giant thing, or a problem. But the name that does it justice is going to be calling it exactly what it is, the tank. Hi, it's your boy Rono Gaming, and I cover biology and lore in games. And with me today is Mr. Coffee Stuff. Sup, guys? He's a scientist, and I'm the weed that's going to bring the cheese. <laughs> All right, gonna gonna kill myself now. So before we kick this thing off, I want to know what you guys think about the tank and if you have any theories or how much would you crap your pants if you saw them in real life? Uh, anybody who does comment, thank you. I appreciate that. I always enjoy engaging with people in the audience. And I had a great time talking with people about the witch video. Holy shit, what in the hell is that? That is a big ass zombie. Oh, that ain't fair. We are screwed. Encounters with this boss infected are really few and far between. Well, unless life or the AI director really hates you, but nonetheless, each and every one of them are to say the least hellish. And he'll certainly make sure his presence will always be an unforgettable one. Cue the apocalyptic jaw scene. Shake the screen and action. Lumbering like a primate, contemplating about only one thing, fisting, killing, and asserting dominance. He's jaws on land. It's considered to be an extreme threat to all considering he's freakishly big. Having undergone the most radical transformation amongst the classes of special infected, standing about 12 foot tall, weighing in at roughly 800 pounds, with an abnormally enormous powerhouse build. The focal areas of the body that have been inflected by the unnatural muscular growth have been its arms and upper body, while its waist, hips, and legs have remained severely underdeveloped compared to the rest of the body. This disproportionate anatomy causes any movements in in terms of mobility to be too physically demanding for the legs due to the vast disparity and ratio of the muscle groups eliciting the beast to appropriately walk on all fours or knuckle walk to travel though its legs are adequately sturdy to uphold its static weight one might think that the monster is sticking his tongue as prey but look again while it seems to be a provocation it's more like it's missing its lower jaws resulting in its tongue being flopped out the tank had a huge makeover during the stretch of week 2 to week 3 of the infection. Flesh cooked from the repeated sun exposure, an increase of battle scars and skin tears, a larger and more inflamed open sore, and baldness. Meaning he's an absolute fucking unit! 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, 100 squ- and a 10km run every day for a week. With his newfound muscular growth, is capable of taking the full brunt of any firepower directed towards it, sending survivors flying with a single punch, and large objects a couple of meters away, and ripping a slab of concrete out of any surface and hurting it towards the survivor. It can single-handedly slaughter a team of survivors within seconds, solely depending on his physical strength and durability. He's eternally angry. He wants nothing less but to crush your head with his two bare hands. Nothing short of death can stop him. 
Fuck you, team. Fuck you, chairs. And where the fuck is Left 4 Dead 3? And he's fucking raw. He is none other than a tank. The boss infected cannot be any more different from one another. One being a passive, emaciated woman suffering from an emotional collapse or mental breakdown. It will only engage once provoked, singling out the survivor that started her and perhaps any in its direct path. She's not a carpet you can walk all over. She she simply wants to be left alone, capable of dealing and resisting a surprising amount of damage. The little white marshmallow, the other being an aggressive hawkish male that have achieved a peak human physique or at least the upper body, it will bulldoze through everything and tank all incoming attacks to kill everyone. He is the alpha male and he will walk all over you, capable of dealing and resisting an expected amount of damage. The Big Raw Beef I have a small theory on why the tank and witch are gender specific strains. One of the main factors being the level of testosterone found in the two sex. Normal testosterone levels in men are around 200 to 1100 nanograms per deciliter. Women secrete much lower amounts, with normal levels considered to be between 15 and 70 nanograms per deciliter. Probably the female sex lower level of testosterone and less developed muscle mass did not reach the threshold of compatibility, response, or influence with the tank strain. The women that have taken body enhancing supplements to raise their level of testosterone or have vigorously trained for strength and or strength endurance, like bodybuilders or women better shaped than me, could conceivably mutate into a tank. Maybe, most likely not. Only if we had another sequel to answer this. In regards to the witch strain, a high barrier of entry probably exists for the DNA of males, possibly due to the particular strain being influenced from female sex hormones. Well, before we hit the science, what's scarier, a handful of tanks or a few dozen witches? Look at that thing! Are guns even gonna work against that thing? Okay, that's reason to panic. What in the hell kind of sign of the apocalypse is that? Oh no! That thing is too dang big! We gotta fight that thing? Shoot it! Shoot it! My personal thoughts on the tank are that, judging by it is the antithesis of the witch, the witch's body wasn't fully converted into a uh, infected state because the virus didn't have enough to work with. Well, with the tank, it has plenty to work with. So it's almost the polar opposite concerning the virus has completely exploded in their body and this is gonna be the result. So let's get cracking on that biology. To begin Again, let's discuss their extreme hypertrophy or abnormally increased muscle mass. When running into a tank for the first time, it is clear that it has suffered the most extensive mutations brought on by the green flu. The most clear physical mutation is going to be the amount of muscle the creature is carrying on its frame, or in other words, hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is when the muscle mass is increased well beyond what is considered to be biologically natural or even functional in some cases. This muscle is going to give the creature massive amounts of strength and with that strength an ability to flip and fling heavy objects at humans which you could guess is probably going to be pretty dangerous. It's not just the strength that you have to worry about with the tank either. Strangely they're going to be exceedingly fast and agile. You would think with all that muscle in the way it would kind of slow them down and make them too bulky to move but the muscle is so strong that it has given it usable agility. Mind you, it cannot stop and turn on a dime, but it can still keep up with any survivor. And it can really rip apart anyone it sees because you're not going to be outrunning this thing. A tank's body is typically covered in scars with one in particular over the left pectoral muscle. Now I'm assuming these scars could be from previous fights, but they could also just be the skin tearing and forming scar tissue due to the massive increase in muscle. The head of the tank is going to be sunken into the torso itself. If you look close enough you will be able to make out the head anatomy is still intact and the lower jaw is actually still there. However, I know I keep harping on this, but the trap and deltoid and neck muscle have pretty much completely enveloped the lower portion of the head, so it has a lot of muscle. Basically, hashtag goals. 
The tank strain must have reduced the production of functional myostatin, the protein responsible for regulating muscle growth and determining the number and size of muscle fibers, which leads to an overgrowth of muscle mass and strength. The heart has adapted to the current existing capacity of the muscle fibers, pumping a lot more blood out of its chambers to maintain its activities of daily living. Tank! Tank inbound! The musculature of the creature is really only present in its upper body, however. Much like a certain Certain video on my channel, the uh, <clears throat> the Leaper Necromorph, which should be coming up on screen right now with a card, it could be for a variety of reasons. Here's my thinking concerning the locations of resources place. Some bodybuilders or gym heads exclusively lift weights, but they like to skip leg day. Just don't skip leg day, kids. Basically, when they're only working out upper body, their body gets used to building muscle only up there. So they have thin legs, but their shoulders, arms, and chest are going to be a lot bigger. And by default, their chest and muscles on their shoulders and all that, they're actually going to be used to having the muscle tear and then heal. So that is going to alter the DNA to want to have a increased ability to maintain muscle and to keep it functional. So this muscle tearing and basically ability to repair muscle comes from the constant stimulus of exercise day in and day out, which like I said will end up altering the DNA, causing them to grow and heal faster in their upper bodies than in the legs. This would be important to the muscle as injured body parts could threaten the ability of the body to survive in dangerous situations. So when the green flu hit, these genes were sent into overdrive. The muscle quickly grew in the creature's torso, but not so much in the legs. Also also to add, some tanks can actually be seen with military tattoos, and if there's one thing that your typical soldier enjoys, it's going to be lifting and achieving a warrior-like physique. So now that we have covered the upper body, what are the consequences of so much muscle disproportionately placed? Because of its size, the tank must walk on its knuckles. Seen much like with the gorillas with stubby legs, the arms take over the role of the legs, or kind of more of a supplementary role. They can still walk on their legs, but they definitely need the arms. This is not to suggest, however, that the legs are completely useless. The legs are able to support the weight of the upper body, and the arms are still used though as a main means of locomotion. And because of this, the wrists actually can become swollen on the tank giving it a much larger size. The muscle swells as part of an inflammatory response to repair an injured or sprained area of tissue. White blood cells in the following fluids will mobilize and migrate to the inflamed area and commence repairing. It appears that in the third week of the infection, there have been reduced sweating in the tank's hand. Either the host body has adapted to the high degree of stress and stimulated new muscles to overcompensate for the damaged tissue to avoid the risk of repeated injury and progressively meet demands of repetitive weight-bearing activities, and or it had the proper amount of rest and had limited its physical activities during that week to treat the sweating and reduce prolonged stress. Tank! Tank! Holy shit! Shit! Tank! The bones clearly have to be reinforced. I base this idea on a couple of reasons. The first is that the support of so much muscle without snapping. There would need to be some sort of density increase to basically be able to withstand the muscle pulling against it. Next, when a tank picks up a car and flings it, this would clearly pulverize any bone used to move that car, as this is a couple of tons placed on an organic formation. Next, a tank can be shot point blank in the face with a weapon and still keep going. The bone would need to be strong enough to deflect any incoming projectiles to keep the brain of the creature safe. I imagine this bone strengthening process would involve an almost bone cancer-like growth. The cells would need to increase in density in order to sustain the body of the tank. Perhaps the growth plates on the bone have been reactivated, allowing the arms to grow in length. And also, did you know that there are some people on this planet, just as a cool side fact, that have doubled the bone density of a normal person. Their bones are exceedingly difficult to break, and there are no negative consequences besides they are more dense concerning swimming than the average person. So you listening right now, you could actually have double bone density and not even know it. You ever broken a bone? If not, that could be you. Myostatin doesn't only inhibit muscle growth. It also indirectly halts the bone formation by regulating the load on the bone. Suppression of myostatin will lead to an overall increased dimension of bones in conjunction with an increased size of individual muscle fibers. The skeletal muscle must be able to contract with different levels of tension 
engine to cause body movements and provide stability. Thus, it adapts by generating comparable amounts of tension to be able to work during the progressive overload. Otherwise, the tank skeleton would have collapsed under the weight of its own body. Oh shit! Tank! We all gotta shoot the tank, you hear me? What exactly makes the tank so aggressive though? Well, it's clear that just like the other infected, they are all suffering from some sort of rabies-like infection. Either that, or when the bone increased in density, this actually put pressure on the brain, causing severe brain damage. Or really, it could just be a combination of both. With the disease and pressure on the brain, this would allow for reasoning and logic to be decreased massively. Perhaps the amygdala has gone into overdrive, creating a heightened aggression. Either way, this has resulted in the tank being perpetually in a state of unending rage. It is going to be more pronounced in it than the other special infected. The tank's rage is going to make it attack any survivor within eyesight, and once it has fixated on that target, nothing, or anyone, can really pull its attention away. It will chase down that survivor until they are dead, or it is dead. Because for this creature, killing is life or death for it. A fight with a tank is always going to be either you die, or it dies. But that raises a question, why exactly does it die? Well, a human metabolism isn't equipped to power something so large. Because of this, a tank will wait until humans are close enough to begin its attack. It appears that for the tank to survive, it must kill survivors. Seeing survivors sends this creature into a blind rage which burns through energy of the body even faster than normal. If you are able to get away from a tank or trap it in any way, the creature will become so frustrated that it will perish after enough time has passed. Now this may be due to energy energy exhaustion, as the body has run out of glucose leading to the failure of organs, or in the other case, pent up aggression. The creature will become so agitated that its blood pressure spikes, with no way to release this anger, it will become a runaway cycle. Eventually the heart, which is already overtaxed by the amount of muscle it's having to pump blood through, it seems it will fail and completely kill the creature. This makes the tank the only infected that needs to kill the target in order to survive. The tank is innately angry and violent due to the lack of impulse control and judgment. Have you ever had the feeling of being pissed off with the traffic, an annoying individual, or some bullshit and want to end them? Yeah, that's him every second, every minute, every hour, and every day. Oh shit! I also believe that there is a possibility that anybody who is using steroids at the time of infection could become the tank. Also, Mr. Coffee Stuff, this part's for you, dude. Uh, what? Uh, sh sure, uh, I'm a governor of the earth. Performance enhancing drugs or supplements probably has a significant interaction with the tank strain, creating a supply of energy for muscle contractions, human growth hormone to build muscle and improve athletic performance, and anabolic steroids. The anabolic steroids the increasing testosterone in the body could lead to more muscle and the virus takes this type of cycle and then runs away with it as the creature becomes larger and larger. Larger. Uh, okay, uh, yes. Antibiotic steroids releases massive doses of growth hormones and testosterone, key elements for building muscle, and the common side effects that associates with abuse of antibiotic steroids explains the tank's temperament and mutation. High blood pressure, hair loss, and a drastic change in mood such as extreme anger and increased aggression called road rage. Shit! Tank! Tank! Run! No, 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 don't run. Shoot! Man up! We got a tank! Oh shit! Tank! I'm gonna beat that tank's ass! Alright guys, that about does it for me. It's been Rono Gaming and it's been real. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video going over the tank. Alright guys, before I say my goodbye, I honestly need to thank the Unsung Heroes, aka the awesome content creators that made the SMS animation and other Left 4 Dead related content. If you love those clips, please check them out and support them. So the link to their respective work is posted down in the description and comment section below and laters.